what's happening, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to episode number 11 of Real Estate Agent Rehab, and I am Amir al Kayat, and I have- My name is Vance Mizzy. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, and we're going to talk today about mastering the one thing, um, being an expert at that one thing, and uh, trying to shift, I think, mindset and focus onto the, the right thing to, to help propel yourself and your business to success. Um, I think a lot of times we focus a lot on the money and we don't focus on um, certain things and um, that may not get us to where we need to be. I could not be a better statement, Amir. Uh, something I was talking about the other night with, uh, with a group of agents is if you could focus on being an expert at one thing in the business that would propel the rest of your business forward, what, what, what is the one thing that you, could, you would uh, focus on? What, where would you want to be an expert? And uh, there, were, there were a ton of different answers that came in. You know, learn scripts. I would like to be a, an expert in prospecting and all these other things. So I kind of scribbled everything down. And, and as we go through these different ideas, let's just go back and forth and discuss where they, where they kind of affect our business. and. Uh, you know, myself as an agent and a uh, trainer, I have a much different uh, mindset than someone like yourself who is an agent and the broker who's building a company. You know, I'm training the company, but you're building the company. You know, we, we, we train it together, but, but it's, it's kind of your baby that you've been putting together. So, you know, from a broker side, and you can probably speak for a lot of brokers, which is, you know, what, what, are the, what are some things that you need to be an expert at to maintain the company's uh, stability? I mean, I, I think the, the one thing for me from the get-go and the, the one thing that always has gotten me excited uh, being a broker was uh, recruiting new agents. Um, I always thought like, I'm going to consistently focus on um, building the team and growing the brokerage and everything else will kind of fall into place. Um, I think it's, it's one of those things like, um, you know, you, if you think about, you know, trying to build a big business along the way, you're going to figure out how to do the other things like keep agents compliant or figure out office space or adding on, uh, employees for support or uh, different team members and things like that. You figure it out as you, as you go in that sense. And, but you keep your mind focused on getting the agents and getting the people and building the team and the rest will just fall into place because with the agents obviously comes more transactions, uh, comes more of the bottom line. And as you're making more money, obviously you can figure the other stuff out as you go. Right. Uh, I think the same thing would go for, for anybody who's focusing on listings. If they just want to focus on getting listings or just working with buyers, whatever it may be, you focus on that one thing and the money will come, the transactions will come, and obviously your happiness and your goals will be met, right? Sure. Uh, my, I'll tell you, my wife put it in a, in a very funny uh, statement a couple of weeks ago when we were talking. Uh, you and I were discussing kind of the build outs and all the other things that we're working on as the company and then our individual businesses and all these other things. And my wife turned to me and she said, you know, you and Amir sound like you guys are building an airplane while you're flying to, to Hawaii in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I said, well, the destination is already set up, you know, like, but we, we know where we're going. It's just, you know, it's just getting there and um, you know, keeping it together to get to the other side. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, a lot of times with that, you know, when, when you focus on a couple uh, main aspects, like we said, you know, prospecting for new agents, uh, you know, finding new agents and, and putting them in the, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in the company. On top of that, for myself, you know, I, I work with, with new agents and, and experienced agents on the training side and helping them uh, build their careers. But in the same right, one of my main focuses is prospecting because, you know, it, as I work with agents, if I'm not putting my own business 
out there, it's very difficult to tell them this is what you should be doing mm-hmm. or this is how you do the business if I don't have the business myself. So it, it's, it's kind of that, that twofold uh, approach. And it's the same thing with you. I mean, you're, you're a successful agent as well. You know, make no mistake, you, you sell your fair share of homes and, and do the yeah, business. Yeah, I, mean, I want to just... set an example and set the tone for the yeah. agent. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm doing deals. You should be doing deals. You know, it is possible amongst all the other things that I have going on, you know, uh, listing or dealing with, with buyers, I can still do that, you know, in my spare time um, and still have a successful office. And I want people to see that it is possible, you know, even if they are a part-time agent, they right. can focus on, on this business and, and be successful. And, and there's nothing wrong with a little friendly competition. God knows you and I share hours. If, if one of us has a listing that's not selling, believe me, folks, we are riding the other one on what are you doing and why isn't it selling? Must, must be overpriced, buddy, or something to that effect. Absolutely. But, yeah. We ain't afraid to have that friendly competition. And that's always good, you know, uh, amongst the team. Definitely yeah. Appreciate that. And, and again, because we both pride ourselves on being, you know, expert listing agents that when we take a listing, we expect them to sell, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't take a, I ne- I've never taken a listing to put a sign in a, in a yard. Right. You know, I've always taken a listing to sell it. And, uh, you know, one of the things about that is where, where do we get listings from? You know, and that's something in, in the prospecting side. You know, I wrote down a bunch of different ideas. You know, who are we going to talk to? Expired, by owners, hot market, just listed, just sold prospects. There's so many, you know, I, I in our, in our, uh, script book, I actually wrote up, uh, I, I think 25 or 40 ways to get a listing. And, you know, I just named five, you know, but there's so many ways. Uh, and how, you know, postcards, letters, phone calls, door drops, social media, follow up. These are all things, individual things that we can be experts at doing that can drive our business. And, and any one of them will drive the business. You know, if I, if I'm an expert at creating, uh, letters and postcards and sending out mailers every month, just relentlessly. You know, we had a builder in here uh, last year, uh, you know, God rest his soul, Eshmael. His thing was send out 5,000 postcards, right? And have the people call me. You know, he he had a very simple postcard that he created and it created business for him. And he he was a, a top builder in the area based on him sending out this postcard that said, I'll, I'll buy your house. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, and, uh, I think a lot of times what agents do is they want to make sure that they're, they're perfect, that everything is lined up before they actually commit to doing the mail drop, making the phone call, ensuring that, you know, everything is so perfect before they actually do it. And they miss, they waste time and miss the opportunities to do so. Um, you know, I had gotten call from a from a company that wanted to uh, uh, do uh, you know recruiting phone calls. You pay them a certain amount of money, and they they schedule ten to twenty calls uh, for you uh, a week or whatever. And it sounded great. I'm like, yeah, like I want that. Here's the money. Here's my card. Let's do it. So, you know, me not doing enough research. Uh, about how I'm going to go about trying to recruit agents during during coronavirus uh, because we're not having people come into the office. I had to rebrush it up on my phone skills and you know revitalize myself as a phone salesman to to talk to people and convince them to come in. And right. I did the first couple phone calls. I mean, they weren't that good. The first couple agents, and so you know, I transitioned my pitch, my, the way I sounded on the phone. And I learned just by practicing and I've obviously spent the money. So I saw the value in having to learn that and adapt to it and just have gotten better to it. And I, and I think that's, that that's important too. And throughout all of this is just, just go out and do it. If you want to have the listings, go out there and do it, make the calls, get out there. Don't wait. Um, you know, because so you're wasting time. I, I have sat on plenty of your recruiting appointments. And uh, one thing I know in person is they're very scripted. I would imagine now on the phone, you're following an even tighter script, whether or not you have it written down or it's just already committed to memory. You're Mm -hmm. kind of going through the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's all committed to memory. So I kind of go through the, you know, the intro 
and you know finding out some information about you know how they found out about us or if they've if they've heard of us um and i talk a little bit about you know my story and how we came to be and uh, my vision and our goals and i try to find out more about their information you know their goals and you know their history as well and transition that to either converting it into a zoom call where we might go over more information just so i can get them even more excited or if they're excited enough just to sign up then just having uh, the, the paperwork and everything sent over to them. But it didn't start out that good initially. It was more <laughs> of a basic call and like, here, I'll send you some info. Let me know if you want to do it. Right. And, uh, and it's kind of morphed into this, to this uh, other process. That's for sure. You know, it's funny. It, it, it comes back to a book. I, I, every year I read a book. Uh, I have, I've kind of this, this library of books that every January I bust out and I read the same books over and over again. Uh, Again, uh, one of my coaches had told me, you, you could read a book a week, but if you don't commit those books to your DNA, then they don't really have impact on you. Mm. And he said, you should read you know, certain books every year. And one of the books that I read every year is The Science of Getting Rich. All right? it's, it's a book that was written back in the 30s, which is really an interesting book because it's all about uh, exactly what you're talking about, that, you know, look, business hasn't changed in 100 years. And it's doing things in a certain way, all right? And, you know, if you do things in a certain way, you expect a certain result. And that's being an expert. And that's what we're talking about today. Like you just said, you know, I, I, I have, a, you know, an intro, a body. I asked them if they're interested. I have all the paperwork ready. It's, it's a routine mm -hmm. that you know, okay, if I do, you know, and I used to say this all the time. If, if I do ABC, I get X, Y, Z, right? But if I skip the first steps, I can't really expect the last steps. And I think that goes for, for all business because we, all, we always have to do things in a certain way. But even more so in our business, if we want to make $100,000 or $200,000, I think it's better to... Um, focus on the deals and you and I were talking about this earlier about focusing on, on, on the number of deals and the activity that you want to create as opposed to the money you want to make mm -hmm. because by, by doing the activity, you'll get the money. But if you focus on the money, you may, you may get it, but you'll always spend it mm -hmm. but by focusing on the activity. You, you create uh, what we call as a duplicatable business. And exactly like you for prospecting or even working with clients, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And I expect, you know, the end result. And, uh, you know, th that's really mastery of our business of, of having these, when I send out, you know, 5,000 mailers, I can expect a hundred phone calls to come back of those hundred phone calls. I'll go out and I'll see 10 of those houses of 10 of those houses, I'll list three. Mm -hmm. That's an absolute way of doing business. And it works. It's just uh, finding that business and then, and then mastering what, it, what, your, what your card looks like and not being kind of sold on one thing. Like, okay, I created this. That's what it is. Being, you know, like you said, first couple times, they didn't work out that well. You know, first couple listings I went on didn't work out that well. You know, it's, it's figuring out what works and it's having that script or having that, that letter or postcard that you can tweak. And uh, when, you know, when you know it worked, you wanna use it again. And that's when it becomes duplicatable and even more so in a business sense is scalable. Right. And you know, if, if I sent out 5,000 and I got three leads, what if I, what if I send out or how about when I send out 20,000, am I going to get 10? You know, and chances are the, when you create a business that you're doing a certain way in an expert way, once you start to multiply that, the effect or the, uh, the result multiplies. It doesn't, it doesn't add, mm -hmm. right? So once you get really good at what you're doing, the more you do it, the more people say yes, as opposed to, you know, for every hundred, three say yes. Well, if you get really good at it, when you do a hundred, three say yes, but when you do 200, you might get 10. 
And I think that's what every agent strives for without even realizing that's what we're going for. And uh, that's what we, we were t- I was talking about this morning when we, when we were saying, what are we committed to? Like, what are we committed to mastering? You know, um, do you, you have daily goals, right? Absolutely. You got to have daily goals of, uh, you know, obviously personal and professional and, and things you want to accomplish throughout the day. It's, it's all, you know, right here in my book, uh, my planner. So um, it's, it's definitely important a daily, but even on a, a monthly, a uh, yearly, or just even the, the end game goal, the, the, the big massive goal of, for me having a thousand agents and focusing on that and, you know, realizing I have to adapt and get there any which way, shape and form that I can, no matter what the conditions are, have um, led me to be successful. You mean, you mean you haven't shut down everything and sat home in your pajamas and grown out your beard because COVID-19 hit and no. we're on lockdown? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, like, you know, <laughs> you even got pretty good with your buzzer, man. Your yeah, I got, we got, I got great with the Clippers. <laughs> uh, you know, I got, uh, I got support there and, um, you know, I've got a great workstation at home when I have to homeschool my daughter. Uh, I'm still there at the house with a workstation set up uh, to work and I'm fully functional from home. If I have to, I'm obviously in the office because we're an essential business right now. Um, having to adapt the way we've done classes, the way we've, we've done our recruiting, um, obviously by doing everything over the phone and uh, finding successful uh, habits that doing it that way. And just not giving up no matter what. And I think that's a big, big issue right now is, uh, you know, we're losing a lot of, of business because people are giving up. Yeah, absolutely. It's, hard uh, now. it's already hard. Now it's even harder. Forget it. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the things you and I both had to ramp up very quickly with was these Zoom things. Oh, yeah. Do you remember, remember the, the first, first day the you first and I were, were talking out. about it? And, yeah, I mean, we had to we beef up our Zoom, the Zoom accounts. We Wait, had to get, you're going to you're gonna buy the whole thing? You're going to go for it? And, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 everything has changed, but it didn't stop us. And I, and I think yeah. that's the point is that it, none of this stopped us, and we still, no matter what, are pushing through to get to our end game. Yeah. You know, it's so easy to just, you know, give up and say, forget it, right? I'll but, tell you what, man. I would love to jump on a plane, fly to Hawaii, and disappear for six weeks. It would have been very convenient and and cheap, <laughs> but that 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 the end you know a, B, that wasn't part of the ABCs for my X Y Z. You know, it was like I got to stay here, I got to work, I got to build, I got to I got to push, 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 push. So uh, by committing to mastery, you create a different, more effective approach to your business. But what we what we see with an average agent is they work kind of deal to deal and they focus on the money and the commission. We were just talking about this and they ride that agent roller coaster. And I think every agent who is watching this right now has experienced that roller coaster of being way up here and then way down here. And, you know, as escrow closes, you realize you're out of business and now what am I going to do? And, uh, you know, they, they work deal to deal. And they work even more so from necessity. And, uh, you know, I, I tell my agents all the time this, you know, in my coaching classes is the, the, uh, the human psyche or just survival is exactly that. It's survival. It's not living abundantly. You know, and uh, last night we were, we were laughing. I said, you know, you don't, you don't see many fat squirrels. <laughs> Squirrels are the, are the survivors that we see all the time. They just kind of bounce around, get what they need, use it. And when they need more, they go get more. And uh, that's, that's where that saying, you know, just a squirrel trying to get a nut comes from. Uh, an elite agent, someone who you and I are looking to train and really bring on, masters their techniques, right? And they, and they work on their listings and their buyers and they work through goal transactions. What do you think mindset wise an agent has to uh, focus on to go from average agent to elite agent? I, I have my ideas, but I'd love to hear what you, what you think about that. What, 
Because you see so many agents. We do. The, the, the typical agent, like you mentioned, they're, they're essentially, I mean, they're during the escrow period, they're, they're figuring out where to spend their, their commission. They spend more time figuring out where to spend their commission or how they're going to spend their commission than figuring out how to get the next deal. And the best time to, to, to get another deal is while you're in the middle of a deal. Because now you're an active agent. Now you got that confidence. Yeah, I'm in escrow. Or yeah, I got a listing. I can get another one. Um, and the it, it's a total mindset thing. It's 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 a committing to this business 100%. Meaning that even though that you may not uh, feel like you have to go into work, you go into work. You go into the office and you start making calls and you're constantly prospecting and following suit to your goals and your vision of where you want to be in this business. You know, so, I, so as, as an uh, effective broker and uh, successful agent, you, you don't want to come into the office every day. No, there's, there's times where I don't want to go. And there's, there's times where I want to go and I can't go into the office for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Obviously with the whole pandemic, there was times where I, I wasn't going in and I was working from home. Um, but but yeah, suiting up and showing up even on the days that you don't have to and, and, and committing to it. It's just, it's a seven days a week, every day I'm working mm -hmm. you now. And that's just part of my lifestyle. And I think about that sometimes like, oh, my life is totally wrapped into my business. And it's like my business is first. Yeah. And, and people disagree with that statement, but that's kind of how I've lived my life. Uh, well, you know, you know what? I, I think you hit the head, the nail on the head when you said it's, it's my lifestyle. Mm hmm um, I, if I, if I may speak for the two of us right now, I don't, I don't think either of us look at this as work. No, uh, it's, this is what I do. It's who I am. It's, it's part of my identity and, you know, yes, I have my hobbies and all my other things that I do. And, you know, uh, my, my wife and my fan, my life and all that. But part of my identity is this is who I am. And I, I kind of feel bad for people who have to go to work and that's not part of their identity, that that's that, that sad time, that sad eight hours of their day, because it's too much time not to be in kind of engulfed in it. And I think when people get into that position is because they, they don't, they're not experts in their craft, they're just doing something. Mm -hmm. And if you're not an expert or you're not striving to be an expert, then you, you kind of don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, look, I, I've seen people who are absolutely just over the top happy about being checkout clerks at the local supermarket, but they know every number, right? Mm -hmm. When they pick up an item, they just pop it in and they're just kind of bouncing through and they got those tags on it says, you know, serving for 35 years. You know, it's, it, it doesn't matter what you do. It's, it's just, do you enjoy doing it? Mm -hmm. And if you do, I think you can really uh, have a fulfilling life. Mm -hmm. You know, we just in general, you know, as, as realtors, we expect, you know, people come into this business for freedom right? You know, freedom of time. I want to make some money so I can go do something. I want to make money so I can travel. Mm -hmm. And I think an elite agent, somebody uh, who's in that, in that upper echelon says, I want to, I want to list 10 houses so I can list 10 more. Right. You know, and I can have the, the uh, freedom to do whatever I want, whenever I want, but I want to be here. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, uh, because agents end up making this a second or third career or whatever. Um, this is a part-time gig for them. You know, they get into the business and they'll do a deal only because they have something lined up. They know that they're going to go buy their own house. They might get that, that listing from their mom right. or what have you. So they're reactive. They, they, they jump in, they get their license. They're like, okay, I'm going to join the brokerage. I might have a mentor or coach. They're going to show me how to sell this house. I'm going to focus all my time and efforts in the real estate business on just selling this particular house. And, um, you know, from there, then that's it. You mm -hmm. know, and they play that realtor for that one transaction. It's done. And um, I think it's pretty sad because what's funny is if you're, 
if you're studying to be a doctor, for example, I know there's a lot of schooling involved with being a doctor. You got to spend a lot of money on school, but doctors don't study their craft to then go, well, yeah, I guess I'll do this part time or maybe I'll help one patient out and then that'll be it. Right. Mm -hmm. I think this is the one industry where it's funny, where people will study, take classes, you know, pay all this money and everything and they'll get it and they might help one client out mm -hmm. and then that'll be it. Yep. And that's where I think if you have the difference between an elite agent, elite agent who is like that doctor that studies and understands and masters their craft and wants to help as many patients or as many people as possible and be successful as opposed to helping that one person and then you're out. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the fine line is like, which, which one do you want to be? Are you going to be the master of your craft? Understand the business inside and out so you can help as many people as possible and make a lot more than what a doctor would make? Um, or do you want to be that person just to help one, one person? And, that, and that's, unfortunately the majority is that, that, that latter is the, you know, uh, I'm going to get my license to, to do that one sale or that two sale deal and, yeah. and then I'll be done. Well, that's, that's, that, uh, that's that survival thing that we were talking about earlier where I'm going to do as little as I can to make just as much as I need to survive. Mm -hmm. And this business allows us to have a completely different mindset. You know, when, uh, when, you, when you interview for a job uh, that pays you a salary, the interview goes something like, well, how much do you pay me? Yeah, I can pay my bills on that. I'll take the job. Right. Right. And here it's like, well, how much do I want to make? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what most people say is, I want to make a million dollars, but I have to make 50. So which one do you make? Yeah. You know, 93% of the people will make 50. Or 97% of the people will make 50. 3% of the people will make the million. And that's where, you know, uh, we get that, that three percenter ideal from where there's only a very small portion of people that are willing to do what they need to and become experts in their craft that will push them into that, that next level, that, uh, that abundant uh, mindset. And, you know, one is not better than the other. I mean, we all got to survive, right? But having that abundant ideal or mindset uh, is something that can be created. It's not uh, learned. It, well, it, it, it's not, uh, you're not born with it. It's learned or it's taught that I want more. Right. And, and I think wanting more gets a, gets a bad rap sometimes, you know, wanting to, you know, be the top agent in the office or wanting to, to uh, be, uh, you know, the top earner. Mm. No, they, they, they don't need the money because they make so much. That's not really cool to even say, you know, it's the, but the biggest question I always ask is why would you do it? And even more so what happens if you don't, you know, you come into this business and you say, okay, well, why am I here? Mm hmm and my next question is, well, what happens if I don't succeed? You know, a lot of people are like, well, I'll just go back to my old job. Well, you were miserable there. You took classes at night. You did all these things online to learn to be a realtor. Don't you want to become the best realtor you can be instead of just sit back and see if business happens? Because I don't know. I never had business happen. Have you? No, you got to make it happen. Right. You, know, you got to get out there and ask for the business, you know, even if it's a referral. I mean, you got to get out there and present yourself a certain way so they can accept you as a referral. They're not just going to give you the business. You have to have somewhat of an understanding of your craft. You can't just walk into it just blindly and, and hope and pray that it's going to work out, you know. So the, there's there's a couple techniques that everybody could use to brush up on and really master. And uh, I would say that, you know, the 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 it's learning your fundamentals right prospect uh scripts dialogues listing appointment you know listing approaches um the next thing would be prospecting creating uh high quality content that that speaks to your audience 
And the last one is committing to excellence and not saying I'm going to, I'm going to play at half, you know, I'm going to play at half volume. I'm, I'm playing, you know, I'm playing at level 11 all the time. I wake up and I am just going. And I know you are too, because you and I speak at six 30 in the morning and you're usually on a treadmill and I've just finished working out. So it's, I mean, we, we, we wake up and we start moving for that reason, because we got to get our days going. Uh, as far as committing to techniques and mastery and things to that effect, what do you think the one thing an agent should be focused on coming in or, or better yet, an established agent, someone who's not new, someone who's here working? I think the number one thing, uh, I mean, for me, in my opinion, is, is getting clients. Um, no matter which way you can do it. If you focus on getting clients and filling up your CRM with people that call or people that may buy or sell real estate at some point in time and you follow up with them and you follow the scripts, you gotta find, you'll eventually do business. Uh, whether it's you know, from referrals, from doing ads, it's generating leads, whatever it is, a way to fill up your pipeline and consistently just focus on getting more clients, getting more clients, talking to more people, get in front of more people. How can more people see me? As you work with those clients, and even if there's things that you don't know or understand, there's, there, you should be at a brokerage or somewhere where you have people that you can ask questions to, you should get support or maybe coaching, uh, maybe a TC or whatever to help you and assist you. If you have an abundance of clients that may want to buy and sell real estate, all your worries in this industry will be gone um, because every, you will figure out everything. And that's the one thing that I did. I read and studied as much as I could to be the best broker that I can and build this company. I was reading book, a, a book a week and then implemented you know, the recruiting and the growth of this company. Mm -hmm. And there were so many other things that popped up that I had no idea going into it would come into place. Uh, legal situations, uh, you know, uh, escrow issues, um, you know, personality issues, um, compliance issues, all of these things that came up. But guess what? When it came up, I had a team behind me to support me that I could ask questions to. I did the research on those certain situations and got through those situations, which made me a stronger broker. And in the end, continued, uh, I continued to grow and became better and better with each, with each agent and each transaction that we did. That's and awesome. the same thing goes for, for agents with clients. You know, Absolutely. build up as many as you can and you will, will, you'll figure it out. I guarantee you that. Yeah. And, and it, you'll always figure out where to spend the money. That's for sure. That's true. Uh, I definitely have, uh, have that. Yeah. That yeah. We all have. <laughs> so, Hey, the hourglass is empty. It's all been right. 30 minutes. Uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, our conversations. This is always a blast to do. I, I hope this is informative to people. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have created a couple of different, uh, products here through, real estate agent rehab and our own company. We've, we've created a, uh, an elite agent planner and also a script book that if either, if you're interested in either, just set, uh, shoot us a message and we can uh, get you the information on it. Both are absolutely suited for any real estate agent in any area. And the, uh, the planner go is quarterly. It'll bring you through every day. It gives you your business plan. Uh, your, your daily to do's, all the things that Amir and I have discussed over the past few months, your three a days, everything. So if you're interested in uh, hearing more about that, please uh, hit the, hit the like button down here. Follow us on Instagram on uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Apple uh, podcasts and yeah, well, we're um, everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, uh... Facebook. And also we have the script book, which are it's it's a compilation of every script all my coaches all my training and all my personal uh real estate business along with some scripts that amir and i sat down and masterminded ourselves to create a uh a kind of a, an, an elite agent handbook that you can sit down and go through and and roll through this thing this is volume one folks there's gonna be many more volumes that come uh you know 
kind of how do you eat an elephant piece by piece and how do we uh, get this information to you? Same way, piece by piece. So I appreciate the time that we spend together. Amir, thank you so much for taking time out of your day mm-hmm. and uh, sitting down with us. Always a pleasure. And so, yeah, so uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you want, you're interested in the planner or the, or the script book, just uh, leave a comment uh, with your email address and we'll shoot you over some info on how you can get your hands on one. But uh, that's all for today. Again, I'm Amir al Kayat and Vance so Mizzy. And- Folks, thank you so much. Have a great afternoon and uh, stay safe. Keep clean. And sell the house. All right. Take care. Be well.